everyone it's Cindy welcome back to Studio Lou so today is kind of just a what's on my desk continuation of working on the VHS journals um, I've come to a point where I'm through all of the cool like um, ephemera that I was making out of like old books like old kind of classic TV books and stuff and I've I'm now kind of going into my um, other things. This is kind of my like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's like a time of like um, discovery. Like what do I have in my stash? So you know, what, what would be cool in these books? I'm probably going to drop by our recycle center today to see if I can find another kind of TV oriented book. But I did find in like the How Things Work book some really cool like TV stuff. Um, so I'm going to play with that today for sure. But then I was like, you know, it would be cool as I had from that big thrift haul I did like a couple weeks ago now where I got all that scrapbooking paper. Remember I got this kind of stuff and I was like, what am I ever going to do with these? Right. Um, so I was thinking I want to grab the T's and the V's and make like a TV kind of like, um, collage pocket. But then I also sort of got the hankering to like maybe try to process the stash of things down a bit and then I came to the conclusion that these frames are pretty awesome and I would like to keep them for laminating um, and then I, I think like I'll keep these letters I want to keep them neatly in a bag I think um, because I just don't like to have to manage all this stuff so I'm going to go through things and determine like what's usable here and what's not because like I just don't want to have so much extra stuff. These would be great little page tabs. So things like that little, I, I thought these would be like nice little pockets. Um, so I'm just going to keep the shapes that kind of make sense for me and get rid of things like this that don't really make sense. But I'm going to be like a little smart about it. So like this would be a cool little page tab as well. So my concept here is like, let's just kind of make some stacks of things and process through this. So not like super exciting here, but grab something and hang out with me if you would like to, because that's what I'm doing this morning. Just kind of a relaxing, uh, working through things. Um, planning to take a walk this morning. We had a really blustery, blustery morning. Um, I don't know what was going on out there. There was thunder and lightning and wind and rain. And my daughter woke up and came in my room and she's like, mom, there's lightning. And I'm like, yeah, there's a storm outside. So we woke up, made some breakfast. My husband just got home from work. Um, hmm. When I look at this, all I see is like an Easter egg, <laughs> but I don't really need it. So I'm going to say goodbye to it. Um, yeah. So it's, kind of a weird day but I'm going to take a walk I'm trying to I came to the conclusion with myself that I was not this past winter I was not as good as I've been with the two to three winters before at telling myself no matter the weather you know get out go for a walk do something right I was not as good this year and I want to be because it's so important to move and exercise Though today, I, my arms are so sore. Well, one of my arms for some reason. Because when I was at the pool the day before yesterday, I decided to make it an arm day. So I do like chin-ups on the bar of the pool beside, um, like in the deep end. So you're like lifting your full body weight in water, which isn't as, as much as your body weight out of water. But it's still, you know, quite significant. So... It's just a more therapeutic way of doing a chin-up because chin-ups are tough. I don't know. Okay. So yeah, that is, I'm definitely feeling it in the back of my bicep, <laughs> but I did pretty good. I did two reps of 10 and another rep of five that I wanted to be a rep of 10, but it wasn't. Um, let's see, I kind of want to have like just a bit of a cardio type day today, a little bit if I can. And, um, get some cardio in. I was 
thinking of going swimming, but I think I have a busy work day and it'll be too hard to get out on my lunch to do that. And my daughter has her skating lesson today. So I just have to kind of adjust. Sorry, I'm not really that well in frame. Let me move up a little here. Not that I'm doing anything particularly wild here. Well, this is faster to do a few at a time. Yeah, but those would be so nice for laminating in. Okay. H. Those might be nice little tabs. I'm just going to put them in my snippets. I think that they'd be nice little snippets. Sometimes it's actually like very serendipitous when I'm putting a page together and um, I get toward the end and I feel like it needs something else and I just take something as simple as this and I take black thread and I just zigzag stitch across it on the edge of a page and it just really adds that finished kind of look. So I tend to try to keep stuff like that. These would be good little pockets. It's a nice little shape. I try not to do a lot of waste if possible. But this is all the kind of thing, like I think it's very much from the old scrapbook days or something. I guess people used to make spreads on their pages with this kind of thing. I was never a scrapbooker. They always, honestly, they still, when I look at scrapbooks, they kind of stress me out. <laughs> you know what it is? It's this, I have the same feeling these days about buying physical media. It's weird because I never used to be this way, but I don't know if it's as I get a little older, I feel a little more conscious of how much stuff I have. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a thing. So I feel like when I look at scrapbooks, the 12 by 12 size of them, I feel like how many of these would you want you know like they take up a ton of room and like it's like if they're for photographs they're like photo albums for memory keeping honestly the older format of you know a regular sized photo album to me seems a lot more functional like it fits in a bookshelf and i think that's why you see so many scrapbook binders and pages at the thrift store because people probably eventually reached that you know we came out of the hysteria of the scrapbook movement and people realized like this is just too much I don't know but you know maybe it's not like I, I don't know I shouldn't judge it that way in that you know people fill their homes with what they like maybe they don't have all the other crap that I have <laughs> so so like they can have as many scrapbooks as they want because they don't also collect vintage toys and you know lost media and all sorts of things like vinyl and uh yeah I am not one to talk about being a minimalist because I am quite a happy maximalist to be honest um except when it's time to move <laughs> Uh, I will always hear my father huffing and puffing as I moved out of, I used to, I used to live in another city in Ontario, um, up north, in Barrie, Ontario. I lived there for a little while, which was kind of a strange time in my life. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about it, maybe just because we're here. So... At some point, I I felt like when I wanted to do something different, I thought I was going to take jewelry design. So I enrolled in Georgian College's jewelry design program, and I was like, okay, we're going to do this. And then I got there, and I completely changed my mind. I just didn't, I don't know, I didn't feel it anymore. I was like, I don't want to do jewelry design. And so when we left... The place that I'd been living before, 
I qualified to get um, employment insurance. So for you know a period of time, I would get the money back that I've invested in in my working career, the EI or employment insurance. So for that time in my life, I was in my I was in my very early twenties. Um, like it was right after school. So. I'm so bad at like when things happen, please, you know, ignore me because I'm really bad at like knowing what year I did what. I don't know why. It's just not one of my skills. So I I ended up being on employment insurance and I was not working because I just moved and we'd gotten this apartment and um, I'll get around to what my, my dad and my maximalism has to do with this, but um, I'll, I'll go on this tangent first. So we'd gotten this nice apartment. It was on the top floor of this little building that was near the waterfront, which is now probably valued at like five times what I was paying for rent back then. Oh my gosh. Um, so I got really into doing like nice interior design, making the apartment feel like it was my own. Like I always do when I've moved from when I used to rent apartments and stuff and condos. Um, and then after that, like my boyfriend at the time was working a job in Toronto. So he had a long commute each day. So I was kind of home alone, left to my own devices for a long period of time every day. And I thought at first, well, this will be awesome. Like, I don't have to work right now. I've got this EI for a while and I can just do creative stuff. So for a little while I did, I mostly painted and sculpted and decorated my home and went on a lot of walks and like I didn't have any friends there I was just kind of on my own because I didn't know anybody there and I had a childhood friend that lived there but she'd moved away by the time I I moved there um so then what happened was like, we did not have cable TV, which, you know, this was before the days of cell phones and internet, like being, well, we had internet, but like, it wasn't on a device that you would sit with comfortably somewhere. Like it would be like on a PC, right? Like in a, in a shared kind of desk environment in our home and like, yeah, in our apartment. So I don't know, I was boring to sit there all day. I was like, I don't want to do this. So then I started watching one of the two or three channels that we got at the time, which was CBC, our, our Canadian broadcasting um, company. And I like, <laughs> I got into all these weird dramas that they were playing at the time. So they weren't all weird. So one was North of 60, which I will always have huge love for. It was an indigenous um, story, Canadian story about like, you know, people who lived um, on a reservation, you know, out west, um, or sorry, east rather. So it, was, it was like in, uh, it, was, it was called Dog River on the show, but I forget where they filmed it now, but I think it was somewhere like, you know, maybe Manitoba or something. I don't know. Um, and I got super into it. I watched all the seasons of it. I was like really invested in the storyline. It's a good show to be honest. It's just, I don't know. I look back at it and laugh, but I mean, it is a good show. Um, very, very ahead of its time, I would say. So I watched all of that. Then I watched Coronation Street, like religiously every single day. I couldn't miss it like would not go anywhere until I'd seen it. Like there was a whole lineup. So in the morning they played like live with Regis and Kelly Ripa. And like at the time, I think it was when Kathy Lee had just left and Kelly had come in. And so it was Regis and Kelly. And I watched that and that was like, okay, whatever. Not really my kind of programming, but there were some funny jokes and Regis Philbin grew on me for some reason. I thought he was like a cute old man. So, <laughs> so I watched that. Then it would be like CBC morning news. So I would watch the news, which like nowadays sounds like nails on a chalkboard. I would never want to watch news. Um, but the news wasn't all bad back then. It was all like different things going on, not just all the world is falling apart type news. So 
Um, yeah, I watched that. Then there were all these weird, like, afternoon, like, Canadian pseudo soap opera type shows. I don't even remember the name. They all had weird names, like, it was like a single name of like a town like Cloverdale or I don't know like they were like your Emmerdale like well Emmerdale is an actual British like soap but you know Canada being um, one of the like colonized spaces of, of um, Britain we have a lot of that kind of programming and stuff so um, yeah I watched some of that then as the day progressed it was weird there was like other shows that were almost like teen dramas like teen soap soap operas so like I would watch those and then I got <laughs> it, it was like honestly it was the great brain drain of my life probably and then I just I reached a point in my life where I could not do anything I just couldn't get inspired so all I would do is go for long walks um because I had no friends and <laughs> Um, yeah, and then I would watch TV all day and I would cook. I would do a lot of cooking. It was actually um, a pretty good time in my life for cooking. I forgot to sort out the T's and the V's. Um, so yeah, I did lots of cooking and um, that was good because I lived right next to a grocery store, which was kind of cool. I was able to like cook a really nice fresh food every day. And I was also reading a lot tons I was reading tons and I was reading a lot of my cookbooks and so I was trying out new recipes every day and I was like enjoying that so there, there were some bright spots and also I lived very close to the waterfront so I was able to go down to the beach which was not like a beautiful beach it was like kind of a dirt beach but not that bad like it, it was yeah <laughs> it was not amazing but it was okay so exciting times I know so then I would watch the evening news then my boyfriend would arrive home from work and we would go out like every night we would go out because I was like I've been in the house all day or like I haven't done anything <laughs> you know I, I would be going a little bit stir crazy so we would go out and do stuff I think I want to keep these in their little blocks but I want to make them look a little like this so yeah there there was um that was a weird time in my life so eventually i had kind of run out of um the the days that i was eligible to get employment insurance because you can really only collect it i think for about three months or something before like it, it's done um for one one stint um so on the day that I got the letter that said, hey, like, you're done, <laughs> I was like, okay. So I went out to the local job bank on that day and they referred me to like, you know, a couple of places that I could go and check for work. And so I went to like the local mall, like I wasn't looking for any kind of like a career at that time. I was just sort of sussing out what I wanted to do with myself, you know, um, as my next education goal or whatever. So I wasn't looking for anything other than a job to contribute to the, you know, the paying of bills and things and so on the day that I went out to look for work I applied for two jobs one in person and one over the phone and I got both jobs <laughs> so that I had two jobs like the day after you know I had run out of employment insurance and so you know I I basically then started working and um it was all like retail type jobs and so yeah, it was, it was a weird time and that went on for a couple of years before I again moved. So then when I again moved, I actually moved out of that city to move back to the greater Toronto area. And um, I still remember, this is where my, my story wraps back into my father huffing and puffing because he was like, you know, he had a dolly, um, like a, one of those carts um, that you move boxes on. And he was, you know, loading it up with these heavy, heavy boxes of art books because I've always been an art book goblin. And um, he's like, don't they have a library in this town? <laughs> so I said, yes, 
dad, they have a library in this town. So like a lot of my art books were from school and were from like, um, you know, collecting. I've always been a book person. I've always been like, I mean, my childhood, I grew up actually in a village, small village that was at the time like a seniors retirement um, town. It's not that anymore. It's been like heavily gentrified with like tourism now and it's kind of in a sadder state now for the people who live there but um, I mean there's there's some good to it. It, it. Nothing comes all good or all bad right? Like there's benefits for some and not for others but um, it was very different when I was a kid and all my friends were you know over 70 so <laughs> there weren't a lot of kids in the town when I lived there as a kid. So yeah I was a very bookish child. We, we had a library across the street and down just a few houses and so I lived there. I read probably every book in that library at some point and so that's um, how I have like a foundational knowledge of everything in the world to some degree. <laughs> I know a little bit about everything. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just a thing with me with books. And so now that I'm journaling and making journals, it's actually kind of nice because the other day I was looking for fodder actually for these VHS journals. And instead of shopping, I actually shopped in my library. So since I've been making journals, I have actually raided through um, my library quite frequently. I've, I've taken books out of there where I just say like, this art encyclopedia. I am not going to read it. I'm not going to use it again for study purposes. So like let's use it, you know, for making art. So that's what I do. Um, kind of shop the stash, you know. So yeah, it's a good thing. And I'm slowly also just like we have a little free library at the front of our house. So each time I read a paperback, I don't keep it. I pass it on and I send it out to the little free library. I'm not reading as much as I would like to these days. Just life's busy with kids, right? You've got the reading that you do is typically relating to the kids. And my time to read used to be before I went to bed. But these days, that's the time I spend reading with my daughter, um, you know it's a lot different. So I'll get back to it though. Always trying to find that infinite balance of like, how do I accomplish everything? <laughs> yeah, so these little panels I see myself using in journals like where letters or words become important. But I think that they're going to be a lot nicer to manage this way, not to have like all these together so okay so that's that little stack there and I've got a little probably have like a little box I can keep these and I actually have a Macintosh tin upstairs from the Christmas caramels I will use to put those in okay so here's the TV stuff oops I forgot to put the bees in there that's okay what is going on upstairs my kids are running around and the dogs are barking. Um, yeah, there's the pink ones too. Let's get, oops. That would be my reminder to take my vitamins. Let's just do that while we're here, right? What day is it today? It is Wednesday. Let's take vitamins. Sorry for the glugging and glubbing. I just have to take my vitamins because I will forget otherwise. Um, yeah, I've my doctor, she recommends taking fish oil. So I started to take fish oil. Um, you know, it's, I guess it's good for some, I, I'll be completely honest. I have not looked into the benefits. I do not recommend it. I don't not recommend it. <laughs> I really have no opinion. I've just started taking it. Um, but yeah, she's like vitamin D and fish oil, you know, it's a good thing to take those, especially in the winter and like, you know, as you're getting a little older and you know, once you hit like the, the age of 35, I feel like everything is like, okay, do this or you're going to fall apart. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I just kind of like listen to my doctor and you know I I supplement certain things here and there I definitely um I have a tendency to get low on b12 so I take b12 as well because I don't want to be low on b12 that's something that a lot of people don't even realize that they're low on hopefully you get blood tests and your doctors tell you because that can happen um, for several reasons. For me, I, I spent a few years of my life with digestive problems that just, I went through a battery of testing and I was misdiagnosed several times and I took like medicines that actually made me more sick and then I just cold turkey went off absolutely everything and kind of changed a few things in my life and I fixed what was going on. Um, and um, also the things that developed as a result of the weird medication I was prescribed. Um, I got rid of all of that and just don't, I don't take anything that I don't take any prescriptions now for anything of that nature. But um, B12 can be depleted from your body if you have digestive issues. Um, you know, if you're having like absorption issues, if you're, you know, um, going to the bathroom more frequently or you're um, not not drinking enough fluid and your body is, you know, in some way not getting everything it needs. You're not absorbing your nutrients as best as you could be because of gut issues, whatever. Um, yeah, B12 is something that you can be depleted of. So blood tests do show it and I think at least my doctor was alerted to speak to me about it and have me supplement it so uh, and then once I did you, you can um you can take like pills for it uh, there's some that you can put under your tongue there's some that you can swallow there's some that are like slow release or fast release um but yeah, once I started taking them, it solved the issue. And I don't have to take them all the time. Just I kind of supplement them a couple of days of the week with my, my other vitamin. And uh, it keeps me where I need to be. But I also don't have all the same issues that I used to have with digestion. But also if you're a diabetic taking like metformin, metformin is known to deplete your B12. So if you take metformin, keep an eye on your B12. I think there's some other drugs that can do that too, like some statins and stuff. I looked into it just when I had low B12 because I was like, oh, why is my B12 low? And then I was like, I'm going to go on a little deep dive here about B12. Because <laughs> this is the things that I do with my time. <laughs> um, yeah. These things are just like, they remind me of just ugly, ugly nursery design. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sort of looking at these going, are you going to use these letters, these pink letters? I don't know. Especially the big ones. Like, will I use this big L for anything? Hmm. I don't think so. You know what? Let's not waste time with these. I'm going to just keep the frames because I will use the frames. I'm going to donate the other part of this back to the store because um, I don't need it. And I think, you know what? Let's be realistic. Okay. I'm going to donate all the big letters. Let's just donate all the big letters. We don't need them. And then the small letters I will keep because I do think I'll use those because I don't think there's going to be a lot of things that like I will um I will end up like wanting to put a big letter in yeah I have to go to the recycle store today anyways I've got like donations that have been building up in my next project in my home sort of renovation and reduction is my garage we have major major goals to clean out the garage organize um, I want to put together really well planned kind of totes for camping like I used to have so 
I want to try to start going camping now that my son's getting to an age where I feel like he's not just going to like run off and get eaten by, you know, an animal or something or get run over or, you know, whatever. He's a little more manageable. <laughs> so, um, we want to start trying to go camping again. And, um, I think that that will be kind of the next thing we need to do is to make like I used to keep really nice camping totes so like we have really great like we have at least I think we have three tents I have um like a camp stove I have all the all the camping gear that you could possibly want like and I just want to put it in organized totes, like having like a, a food prep tote that has all your cutlery and your, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then like a toiletries tote and then a supply, a general supply kind of tote. And then like your soft bags for your um, sleeping bags and air pillows and air beds and all that kind of stuff. Oh, there's more of these little ones. Okay. Um pink little ones pink little ones I do not think I need them I'm just going to keep the T and the V and I'm going to just donate the rest I think frames included I think I'm good I don't need all of these I don't need to be so bulky here so these can go back and we'll keep these because they're good for the TV project. But yeah, I don't think there's going to be a lot of other things that use letters in such a pre present way to keep all these. I don't want to hold on to things in case I need them or something. It's kind of silly. Okay. So T and V. We'll keep that here. Now... Should I also, let me look here. So these little letters, okay. I'm not gonna keep any of the pink ones. I just don't think I'll use them. I'm not like, they're a little too frou-frou and girly and all those things. I can see myself using the brown ones cause they're more neutral, they're more useful. You know, like I could spell something that makes sense. Like, you know, um, I'm, my next um, vintage book is called Nedra that I wanna work on. I could spell Nedra with those and it wouldn't be so weird. Um, but bright pink is a little too much. So, okay, so I think that's probably it for a a blathering on video about all sorts of things um and thank you for hanging out with me while i punched all this stuff out so now we have a bunch of nice frames that we can do some laminating in the cool thing with these is like they're you know like a die cut frame i don't have to use the colored side i can also use the blank side and paint it however i want so i will organize these neatly somewhere and um these letters i will turn into tv related something and then these little bits i'll just put into my snippets so i am going to do some work today on the tv vhs journals i've got to go and try to get some more stuff for them and also do some stash hunting so i hope you have a great day and we will talk again very soon bye for now